Just got out of work, but I got some press conferences for you. What is up, Finn fans? Yes. Normally when I just get out of work, I give you guys straight from the phone, either in the car or here, but straight from the phone so you can get the information and so I can get the videos out to you as quick as possible. But today I'm recording it. So again, I still am in my work clothes, but I'm recording it for a reason. And I'll get to that reason when the reason happens and it pops up. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. So essentially, before we jump into these press conferences, and you already know by the title, Tua had a huge press conference today. It's literally almost two pages of my notes. I have, look at this, I have all these notes. Uh, Tua, Byron Jones, and Gachow met with the media today. But before we jump into Tua's press conference, and then we'll get to Byron Jones, then we'll get to Gachow, Miami Dolphins signed a cornerback. Are you surprised? Brian Flores loves his cornerbacks. We signed uh, Dietrich Nicholas. Uh, he was actually from the XFL, and he was a very big XFL interception leader, very good corner, all that stuff. So they brought him in, they signed him, and to make moves for bringing him in, they waived uh, the safety Stephen Parker, who actually played a good amount last year for us and was actually pretty decent. So I wouldn't be surprised if they bring him back somehow. And they waived tight end Bryce Sturk. Bryce Sturk, if you guys remember, is an undrafted free agent we brought in. He was a defensive end that we moved to tight end. But with all the tight end additions we had, they probably were just like, yeah, we're not, we can't take the time to have some type of experiment by taking a defensive end and moving to tight end. So that's pretty much the only transaction that happened today. And let's jump into these press conferences because I know you guys want to hear from Tua. So the reason why. This is recorded, and it's not straight from the phone to give you it as soon as possible. It's because Tua came, and he was wearing this. And you can see what he's doing, and he said, you all like my jersey? And I just, I could not make this video and talk about his press conference without having that video pop up. It just, it wouldn't do any justice if I said that he did it and you didn't see what I was talking about. He talks about adjusting into the NFL, which is big. Going from college to NFL is a lot faster. He says it's different learning curve than I'm used to at Alabama. Not as much time on the field. We spend a lot more time watching film than anything else. Not to say we don't have time, but it is, uh, uh, it is more in your meeting rooms and watching film. I don't know if he thinks that because they're literally of COVID. There's no OTAs mini camp and a full training camp because he might feel a little different about that come next season when he has a full fledged, full off season and he's OTAs, walkthroughs, mini camps, and actual full fledged training camp where you're on the field a lot. Um, so he, he might feel a little different about that. I think he might be talking about just this season because this season, yes, it's a lot of room stuff and Zoom meetings and film work and all that stuff. Um, he says, I, uh, I'm in the process of learning, understanding Chan Gailey's offense. It's a fundamental environment with Chan uh, friendly, not fundamental. It's a friendly environment with Chan and the other quarterbacks. You're going to see him and Fitzpatrick have like a, a little bit of a, a bromance going. He's wearing his jersey. So they got a little bit of a bromance going on. He says it was super awesome. Uh, and it was really cool for Dan Marino to reach out to him after he got drafted. He also talked about that Dan Marino the first day that they were in the facility in the room. Dan Marino was in there with him. And it just um, it pumps me up. I'm Like I love it. Dan Marino's the reason I am a Miami Dolphins fan. And to see that he's so hands-on and so on with these quarterbacks it makes me so happy he also talks about dan and he says i say dan because he's my best friend he's a really down-to-earth guy someone you can ch you chat with for someone who is pretty much the talk of the town he's pretty humble he doesn't walk around like he's the man but come on we all know he's the man especially in south florida for me my focus right now is trying to get into the playbook and understand what we're doing offensively and build a relationship with the team he says that multiple times and it makes me so happy to hear him say that he's not about oh, i'm going to go out there throw 50 touchdowns i want to get out there and just play i want he wants to understand the playbook and it is huge for a rookie huge for any type of quarterback to understand the playbook because if you understand the playbook and you know how to call audibles and you know how to move formations and you know how to shift to protection you can control the offense and in turn mess with the defense's mind because you know what you're doing. I also said, I love that he says that he's building a relationship with the team. You want to have your quarterback have that relationship with their team because you've, you've seen certain quarterbacks getting hit or something and the team rush after. 
You know, you want to have that connection with your team. And it makes me it makes me very happy to hear him be so heads on and so nose to the books and everything, trying to learn this offense and also build a great relationship with the rest of the team because he wants to be the future of this team. He wants to be that quarterback. He said he kept uh, ra- he well, I'm not he didn't say it, but he kept raising Fitz's uh, jersey. And he says, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm wearing. And he kept doing that, which. They have a little bit of bromance, and I love every minute of it. Um, In our culture, respect is the biggest thing when he talks about the Samoan culture. He says, in football, respect is almost demanded. Football intertwines with the Samoan culture. Both are based on respect. When you get chewed out, you learn how to eat it. Yes, football, it's about respect. It's about earning the respect. It's about, you know, respecting who came before you. You know, the fact that he was so gaga over Dan Marino coming in, I probably would have passed out if I was him. That's respect. He's showing the man respect. You know, you respect the ones that came before you. And like he said, in the Simone culture, that's very important. I love this kid. You know, I wanted Dolphins to draft him, but after hearing him talk, he's a smooth talker. It's a smooth operator. He said, I thought I could break the ice making you guys laugh wearing the Fitz jersey. It's kind of just started out with Fitz being a very down-to-earth person, very humble. I got to meet his family two days ago on a Zoom, and he forgot two of his kids uh, after he thought he um, introduced everyone. Again, him and Fitz have this bromance. And I would. one of you guys asked me in comment of the day, would I want uh, Fitz to come back as the quarterback's coach? The connection that he has with Tua, I don't see why not. Especially if, say, Tua does start the season or Tua does come in on the season and we see that he's playing really well and we see that Fitz is constantly helping him. Like, with the like, look, you see, you see where the route was going and see where the safety – you pulled the safety, but the route went here and you should have thrown it here. That's what, essentially, if you guys don't know, whenever they have the tablet or the paper and they're talking on the sideline, that's what they're doing. It's from the plays before. They show where the route was – like – you know what I'm saying? But if Fitz is doing that with Tua a lot, I wouldn't see why not, especially if Tua keeps growing under Fitz. I don't see why not bring him back as a quarterback's coach. He says, Fitz is doing a tremendous job trying to help mold me. And he says, so is Josh. He throws Josh in there. Josh Josh Rosen, the guy that you, some of you guys really, really love. Not saying I don't love Josh, but for, uh, after after this interview, I freaking love I love Tua. Tua is my man. And he talks about now that they ask him about essentially like going out and wearing a mask and stuff. He's, he's he says he doesn't go out. I just stay home or I go to the team hotel. Yes, please, thank you. Don't pull a Marlins and go get food and then bring back all this crap. You just never know until it happens. So he talks about taking a hit finally. And I won't know the feeling until I actually get tackled. It's a trial and error type of thing. You have to do it to know if it does or doesn't hurt. I honestly think, if you want my God's honest opinion, I honestly think that he, if when he gets tackled, he's just going to get bounced back up. I Don't get me wrong. All of us Dolphin fans are going to take a deep breath. And, and then he's going to get up and he's probably going to smack the defensive end, linebacker, safety, corner, whoever tackled him on the helmet and say, good hit, and go to the next play. Everyone's so worried about Tua. Everyone thinks he's such a fragile kid. He's had five injuries before the hip injury. Five. And they were all normal quarterback injuries. He banged his he- his hand on a helmet, broke his index finger. Please tell me how many times you've seen quarterbacks in the NFL nowadays do that. Bang their hand. Oh, Stafford, I've seen done it. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. They've all banged their hand on the helmet of a guy in front of them. He sprained his ankles. I've sprained my ankles thousands of times playing basketball, but he got the type rope surgery so it doesn't happen anymore. He hurt his knee. None of those injuries and none of the things that make him injury or prone kept him out of games, except for the hip injury. So I honestly think when he takes his first hit, he's just going to get up and he's going to pat the kid on the, the guy on the head. It's a good hit. He's going to pull on Andrew Luck and compliment him on the tackle. Um, he talks about the pressure, essentially trying to be the next best thing. I understand that it's there. But my main focus is just being able to get in the playbook, build relationships with the guys on the team, and focus on what we've got to do inside the building. Again, he says it again. He's trying to learn the playbook, and he's trying to build a relationship with his team. Good. Keep your nose down, kid. And last thing he says is Flores is teaching situational awareness during his team meetings. We work through it on the field and also in the meeting rooms. You also want to, you know, hey, it's 4th and 14. What are you going to do here? This is happening. Situational awareness, you know, knowing your surroundings, knowing who's coming at you, what to look for, all that stuff. So, but honestly, it was it, it was fun listening to this kid talk. 
He knows how to talk to the media. He, kn- he knows that, he, hey, he might be a s- smooth swindler, but he got me excited to watch him play, and I'm very excited for whenever he hits that field. Now let's jump into Byron Jones, and then we got Gotch out, and then I'm going to get to one of you guys' comments of the day. So Byron Jones comes in there. He talks about the defensive style. He says they're running more man, more man-to-man. It's fun. We have the corners for it. We have the secondary for it. Xavier Howard excels at man-to-man coverage. Man needs to come off the pup, and he needs to get on the field because having him and Byron Jones running man-to-man defense, we're going to shut people down, and I'm excited for it. A big reason I was brought in, this building is already building on a good second year. I'm just another piece in the puzzle. It's building off of Xavier and Howard, Eric Rowe doing their thing, Nick Needham having a pretty solid season. Just put that piece in there. Just put that piece in there. This is a young roster. There is no getting around that. They are they, These guys are hungry. This is different. Flores' intensity is very apparent when he speaks to us. Flores is a big defensive guy. He's a big secondary guy. Again, he brings in thousands of corners. But, yes, definitely he is very, very hands-on with this defense, especially the secondary. I'm wondering what the man got up his sleeve bringing in all these corners. Very interested. He talks about Xavier Howard. He said he's better at attacking the ball than he is, and he says that he's working on it. They both excel in man coverage, like I said. But, you know, Byron Jones is a shutdown corner. He doesn't have the interception numbers, whereas Xavier Howard has the interception numbers because he's been on the, the field barely, but he has crazy interception numbers. He's the ball hawking guy. Byron's trying to be an all-around guy. He wants to be the shutdown guy, but he also wants to pick you off, which is going to be hard. It's not going to throw your way, but if you got both Xavier Howard and Byron out there, they're going to have to throw to one of them. He says, I, play, I pay very little attention to the outside noise. I focus on myself. Uh... I make sure my craft is the best it can possibly be. My footwork, my eyes, my mentality. The man is getting ready to dominate this season. He says, uh, practice uh, are more walkthroughs, uh, you know, walkthrough pace. He says, um, but pads are coming this week. So be ready for that. And I can't wait. Monday. If you guys didn't know, I said in the last video, Monday, they're going to be wearing pads. He says, attacking the ball is a skill set like any. You have to work on it daily. During special teams periods, I go over with Coach Chunk, Cunts, the uh, secondary coach, and work on ball tracking, doing things uncomfortable to make them natural. The man wants to get more interceptions to shut people up because, again, people like to say that Brian Jones, hey, he's all right, we just have the interception numbers. When he gets those interception numbers, all of a sudden we're going to have the best cornerback in the whole entire NFL, and I'm excited for it. Then lastly, Gotchow came out. And if you guys notice, Devon Gotchow has been readily available to the media, and it's for a reason. He's taking that leadership role on that defensive line and in the defense. Will the Dolphins resign him? We'll see. But he is taking that role on seriously. He says, we want to be a physical line. We want to rush the passer and stop the run first. Yes, please, for the love of God. He's t- when he talks about the defensive end additions, he says they're big, strong, physical guys that can set the edge, rush the passer. We lock, we look at those two guys. They can really set the edge and play on third down too. That's very important. It's underestimated. You know, when you look at defensive ends, a lot of people just sack the quarterback, sack the quarterback, get after the quarterback. Look at how many sacks these defensive ends have. Look how many sacks they have. Yes, it's important. And those moves are important, but you also look at tackles for loss, and you also look at how they can set the edge. If these defensive ends can't set the edge or the outside linebackers can't set the edge, you're just going to have a lot of running backs running to the outside and getting a ton of chunk yards. Yes, getting sacks is important, but you got to be able to set the edge and you got to make the tackles. Um, he says on Tua, real quick, real simple, he says, that's my guy. He says he's a great guy. Straight to the point. And then finally, he talks about the scheme essentially pressure, the scheme of pressure. He says, you have to have everyone do their job. It's a team effort. Once you do that, you're going to get your stats. You can't have a guy be selfish saying, I'm going to jump the gap when he should be in that one gap. And that's the last thing he talked about. And I could fold up this giant piece of paper that had all my notes on it. Well, that's incredibly important, the last thing Gotchow said. And you'll notice that, yes, and Dominican Sue is... Is a hu- was a huge addition for the Dolphins, money-wise, and he had the talent, but he did things on his own. Same thing with Kiko Alonso. A lot of these guys were freelancers. They would do whatever they want, and that screws everything up. If you're supposed to hit this gap and you decide, oh, but he's going to that gap, I'm gonna, you're going to mess everything up. Be a de- team player. Follow your scheme. Follow your play, and it will all work out. But that is what the guys had to say. 
I love it. I loved everything everyone had to say today. Tua was doing his Tua thing, you know, and I just loved it. But he made me laugh in wearing that Fitz jersey and the connection that him and Fitz have. I hope he ends up being like just one of the best and then Fitz becomes our quarterback coach. That would make me excited. Byron Jones. The fact that the man is taking time out and he knows that he won't need to get his ball hawking back and he needs to get his that skill up. And while they're doing special teams, he's on that jug machine learning how to track and catch balls. It just it makes me incredibly incredibly excited and then we got Gachow, the leader of the defensive line coming out here and saying some great things so be sure to comment below let me know what you guys think of the move picking up another corner that xfl corner what do you think of what the guys had to say and i'm gonna get to one of you guys comment of the day this comment comes from miller hendrix and he says question with the gadget type players becoming more and more popular could we expect malcolm perry to gravitate towards special teams and if he succeeds there perhaps he could he, he could even a Tariq Hill career arc. Edelman was a quarterback in college too. I don't know. Um, I honestly kind of see like maybe uh, Brandon Jones being a kick returner. He he did he very he excelled at kick return. I wouldn't put Igbenogany out there because again he was first round pick. So I don't know if I'd do that. But yeah, I could see uh, Malcolm Perry going out there too, doing his thing like a chicken wing. You guys saw uh, yesterday uh, there was video of uh, Tua throwing a pass to him. You never know. But, yeah, I see exactly where you're coming from because, you know, there's a lot of – and you look at tight ends. A lot of the big top tight ends were basketball players in college. Some of them didn't even never played football. So, yeah, I could see a lot of these guys coming in, doing their thing, and really producing with this Miami Dolphins team and having them fit in the right position. Because if you remember what Chan Gailey said, he's a players type person. He puts the players in the right spot. So thank you for the comment, Miller. And uh, that's the video. Like I said – be sure to follow me on Twitter. That's where I got a bunch of my information from. So be sure to go follow me on Twitter. Um, like I said, if more news breaks or if more press conferences happen, you're going to get videos from me. I'm going to try to make a video tomorrow or Saturday. And then I'm going to be moving on Sunday and Monday. We'll see if I can get some more news out to you. If I do, it'll be probably from the phone and it won't be with this background. Uh, but be sure to check out fan to fan Network this Sunday, 4 p.m. They're going to be on Twitch doing their, their big broadcasting debut. So be sure to check that out and check out the website, fan to fan networkcom Check out DolphTalk.com, another great site that I have all my stuff on as well. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like usual, stay classy. My fin's up.